2015 Village of New Paltz Planning Board meeting at 7.03 p.m. My name is Maurice Whiteman. I'm chair of the planning board. I'm calling the meeting to order. Other members present this evening are Rich Steffens, Michael Zerler, Liz Harsho, and John Litton. Our secretary is Brogan Rose O'Donnell. And the uh, village planner, Brenda White. Impersonating Brenda Smith, the last two meetings. Brenda. <laughs> and Tom Rocco is our village board liaison. Our attorney is George Rodenhausen. And we have an agenda with two site plan reviews and three ZBA referrals and some other business. Um, the first site plan review is PB 1408, proposed construction of two-family, is it one two-family building? One two-family house. Yeah, one two-family building on Pencil Hill Road. Come on, come up, come on. Can we, do the, can we go next, or it doesn't matter? Okay. We'll get started, we'll get started. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do you next. Okay, um, thank you. Water Street Market Site Plan Approval, PB 1409. Let me shift gears from over here. I've already asked you how you are, Bob, so I'm not gonna ask again. <laughs> Okay, so what, would you like to explain why we're here for this? Or would you like me to give my... Uh, why don't you go ahead? I'll try. Okay. Correct me if I make any mistakes, which I doubt you. So I believe this began as a result of an application that was made for a cinema on the Water Street property. And while that was in the works, uh, the building department was informed of some irregularities with the site. Uh, he made an inspection and came up with a list of things that were not in conformance with the site plan that was on file. Is that correct so far? Yep. Um, and so you said you have submitted a revised site plan showing some some changes that were made. I think it somewhere. Maybe I don't have it. I thought I had it. Okay. And um, so, why don't you tell us what what you've done? Okay. What's on the plan? The um, the original location of the dumpsters uh, was was changed. Uh, it's now down in the lower parking area. Um, Are you describing what is there now or what you propose to do? That's what is there now. Oh, so in other words, the plan is showing what is there now. That's right. right. So the, the dumpsters are in the lower lower parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, and they, um, they're requiring an enclosure. Uh, and um, I, I couldn't find any specific um, design requirements in the code. That's probably true. Okay. Um, Three-sided, four-sided. What are we looking looking for? Well, why don't you speak to the building department? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, I, I've I've seen three-sided with doors. Okay. Um, you know the the idea is to make it so that things can be contained, so that any spillover doesn't go anywhere, and then there's a a, a sight. You know, a vision, uh, visual impact. Uh, so if it's shielded from public view, then you probably don't need four signs. But okay. I think speak to the building department. They'll set you straight. And then uh, as far as the setback, I believe the way the code reads on the dumpsters is um, uh, setback is equal to the side setback in the particular zone that it's in. Okay. And um, I think, I think right. the gateway is a zero s setback. So I'm uh, assuming uh, that we could, start, yeah, even right. even though that we're not going to get that close, we're probably 12 feet away from the property line. Okay. Keep going. Should, should I check with the building department on that? Well, as, as well. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that after that. Let's 
we can keep going in the, in the meantime. Uh, in the original um, uh, site plan, the uh, the oil water separator was not under a parking spot, and it currently is. But um, I've determined that the the weight of the uh, the construction of the um, oil water separators of such that it can take a, a load from a vehicle. Okay, that was one of the items. Um, there was trees, there were trees shown on the original site plan 15 years ago and for the life of me I don't know if those trees were put in or if they if they died or, or what happened with those. Uh, they were supposed to be uh, evergreen trees. Uh, right now along that property line that would be um, that would be the easterly line and south of uh, uh, south of the existing barn um, just off the property. Uh, and there's a fair amount of deciduous trees in there. Um, again, I don't know if the trees were planted and died. Um, I don't know. Right. All right. And then we have the parking striping has changed. Uh, since the original site plan. Okay. Uh, some of the landscaping has also changed. All right. But I don't think significantly. Okay. I think that's that's about it. What about the uh, width of the driveway or the? The, width, the widths of the driveway are range in about the uh, 18 to 19 foot wide. Right. Um, I mean, it was built that way 15 years ago. I uh, I don't know how or why, but does that's the site the way plan 15 years ago show 18 feet? No, it didn't. It didn't actually show any dimension, as I recall. Did, did it show the concrete walls there at that time? <clears throat> uh, the retaining wall? Yeah, I think it did. Do, do we have a copy of the original site plan up here? We do not. No. Um, so the, the work that Rich did to compare the as-built to the original site plan um, do we have a list of those things that are not in conformance? I believe that he wrote them up in his in his write up. Okay. I, I do seem to remember there being You have a copy of this, right? You got yeah. From, I believe I do. It's in a different format than that. Uh, no. Just where I have, a, I have the notice of violation. No. Uh, at, what date is that? It's 9-11-14. Uh, okay, this is written 10-9. It's addressed to you. 10-9. No, no, it's not addressed to you. No, either. it's addressed to Planning and Zoom. Right. Okay. okay. Don't know if I received that. Now you have. Oh, you. <coughs> is, is there another copy of that around? Mm -hmm. If I can have, please. Thank you.
Can I keep this copy? Yes, yeah. that's for you. Oh, thanks. So, th from from my perspective, the the biggest problem seems to be the driveway. That that the code says twenty five feet, and you've got seventeen or eighteen or something like that. And it may have been that way all, all the time. I don't know. Um, I would like to see the original drawing at at, at some point if, if we can uh, if we can get that scanned and sent to us so we can see what we're talking about here. Okay, so. Rich Travis went right to, as you can see there, some ZBA variances that he right. thinks would be required. Right. Um, I don't know of any alternative to that, George. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Variances. <clears throat> I don't know if the driveway is a ZBA issue. Because I think that's the New York State Fire Code that determines the width of the double. Didn't we go through this on a Church Street property? I not recall. Oh, I, well, we, I do we recall. We did the Church Street property. Yeah. We were talking about the chimney. Yeah. I think, I think that was residential. Right. Maybe I'm... I thought maybe, it had to do with two-way traffic. Certainly the ZBA will we'll refer to the fire department. To get there. No, I mean, this is New York State Fire Code that says. Maybe they should be served to the state too, or consult the expert from the fire department, or from the uh, state fire code. Um, well, it, it has to go to them first. The ZBA has to make that, they have to take it from you. So that's very nice. But I was looking at this, the side yard 10 feet. Is that what? What uh, yard are they talking about with this variance? Up against the, the residential property. Parking adjacent to residential district. On the east, east side. Yeah, on the east along here. So, okay. East side. So this edge here. In uh, 13G, 13J, the gateway district. There's another side yard or yard setback provision. Side yard, except if it's body in residence or residential district. Let's say none required except if it's body in residential, and in this case, requires a 15 feet of landscape buffer to protect the adjacent uses from nuisance characteristics. Is there a landscape buffer there? There are fences there, fairly high fences. I'm not sure on whose property. But that's an issue of the planning board uh, discretion. The planning board may require up to 15 feet of landscape buffer. Right. What's, the, uh, what's the section there, 212, 13? 13 G, uh, J, 8. 13 J, 8, uh, A and B. Rear yard is up to the same thing, up to 15 feet landscape buffer. It's just unique to Gateway. Right. So, Bob, I would say your next stop should be the building department or make a CBA application. Do we need a referral? No. Correct? It, it will come back here for a recommendation. Right, but, but we don't have to refer you to the I don't think they have in their code a referral provision authorizing the planning board to refer directly to the CBA. You have to apply to the CBA. Actually, right. so you have to apply to the building inspector. And yeah. they'll well, that's what I mean. Yeah. Building inspector. Okay. Do we need to come back here for any issues? Um, well, you'll have to come back. Uh, you won't have to come back for their referral. They will have to refer to us for our recommendation after they uh, get everything that you submit. And um, after that, it depends. If they give you, if they grant all three variances, then 
I would imagine we're done. I don't know if there are any. Uh, well, there, there are the parking thing they can do. I think but you got to have a site plan approval, so it's yeah. yes, yes, yes. But regular public hearing. But for these, oh, I'm sorry, you're talking about for the project as a whole, or right. for yeah? Just, then you have to come back for the regular process. Yeah, I suppose the ZBA will refer it to the county. So that will take care of that referral. Correct? Mm -hmm. I should. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Bob. This is a good one. This is a good one. Is it three? No, it, is, it is three now. What's three? The number of spaces per dwelling. Oh, it's changed from two to three during this year. So it's now three. Was two. Okay. So I have the wrong number in my memo. Okay. Okay. Mr. Caffrey is ready. Yes, sir. All right. Welcome back. Good evening, everybody. So, Mr. Caffrey, you are here for site plan approval for a new project on Pencil Hill Road, which is a two-family building. And you've submitted a site plan, um, and your what I heard was that you are saying that we only have to look at your parking well, that's as what opposed I, to the full site plan. That's what I had thought when Brenda corrected me. Or somebody yeah. corrected me. Yeah, yeah. Full site plan. Yeah, full site plan. Okay, then we have lots of stuff missing from the site plan. Okay, cool. That's why, that's why we're here, right? Okay. So... Um, sorry? Sure, sure, sure. Um, <laughs> Brenda, do you have an extra copy of, of this? Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, good evening, folks. Uh, Mike Gillespie, I'm the consultant engineer for the project. Tonight uh, with me is Guy Caffey, the applicant, and Ken Stanger was counsel to, uh, to the applicant for the project. Um, I think some of you may be familiar with this from, from maybe in front of the board on a, on, a, on a kind of a related project some time ago, but it changed quite a bit in scope and stature and so forth, so let me give a, a quick rundown of the overall. Uh, if you're familiar with the area, effectively, while we do maintain a majority of our frontage on Pencil Hill Road, the project is located uh, at Pencil, Plains, Mohawk, and Water Street, kind of where all those, those, those streets uh, converge. Um, we are in an R2 residential zone. Uh, what we're proposing is a, a, a two-family home, a total of eight bedrooms, which is a, a permitted use within the zone. The parcel itself is just under 33,000 square feet, or about three quarters of an acre, just to give you an idea of size. Um, it is a, a proposed single building. The footprint um, is about 1,600 square feet. When you include the first and the second floor, we're on the right around 3,000 square feet uh, total. Um, in terms of the layout, based upon the orientation and configuration of the, of the lot, um, a bit of a challenge in terms of making things work, but effectively what we have is we, we do meet our setback requirements, which are defined uh, in this area here. We are proposing sole access coming in off of Pencil Hill, just, just off of the intersection. We're proposing a total of 15 parking spaces, which I believe is, is over what we required based upon the building with the bedroom and size and so forth. There is a stream uh, water course 
that's located along this portion of the property that runs effectively parallel with Pencil Hill Road. And as part of the requirements specific to the village, we're required to not be within 20 feet of that relative to courteous services and things such as that. So we detailed that 20 foot separation here. And in fact, um, we've kept all our parking and our drive access aisles out of that location. You'll note now that the, the, the area as it serves now is effectively just a big gravel area, which has always served effectively as, a, as, a, as an auxiliary parking area well prior to even guy purchasing it. So um, probably part of the benefits of this certainly would be the fact that, you know, the existing gravel area and so forth would be pulled away from the edge of the stream to the edge of the buffer. Um, and uh, certainly would enhance that, that, that corridor down through there. Um, so uh, from an overall standpoint, uh, obviously central water, central sewer, um, that's, that's kind of the overview of the project. Okay. In addition, based upon the FKDC requirements, the, uh, the, the effective disturbance of, of what we're proposing is well under what's required for the, the formation of a formal stormwater pollution prevention plan. Certainly, there's still erosion control and flood control that would have to be in place, and would be as the next iteration of this plan, those would have to be detailed um, to ensure that there's no contravening of the stream and so forth. Mm -hmm. but, uh, from, a, from a logistical standpoint, relative to the amount of disturbance we're under the plan. I don't know if this was submitted as part of our application, but just to give you an idea of architecturally what, what we're looking at there. So. Um, can, is that your final question, or do you want me to wait until I'm Well, I, I wouldn't mind that he, that he finish. Okay. I mean, other, effectively, that's the overview. That's, that's finished. Okay. Now, as, as you, what, what we would normally do is, um, we would not even put on the agenda an application that isn't ministerially complete, that has a conforming site plan and everything else. And there was some confusion about that on our end. So we're here, okay. and we've, and we've, uh, we've uh, given you a memo that shows some of the things that are missing from the site plan to make it complete for us to, uh, to look at the application. Okay. So that's what we will do after we get your next site plan to conform to the requirements of our code. In the terms of the stipulation between us and the village, this is all spelled out. If you didn't have a copy of it, like I'll get you a copy of it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, as long as, I think part of it too is, is my understanding is too, we're in for a, uh, our initial application discussion with the board relative to layout, make sure we're in some same accord relative to what we're proposing here. And then certainly we can go ahead and provide all the details to require as part of the standard site plan application. And that, that goes without saying. So. I have just one question if, if someone can help me so I can be better prepared for the next meeting as well. Um, on the other side of your memo, uh, I was I was counsel for Mr. Caffrey on the uh, litigation that referred to in the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't read the agreement before I came here tonight, but this looks very accurate and very, very consistent with what our, our agreement was. So we'll, we'll get those features incorporated into what you need to have in front of you before we can proceed. I didn't think that agreement had anything to do with this. Yeah, no, it, it, we, no. Um, what we did when we settled that, well, you're going to have that up on another piece of conversation tonight. And if you need the background, I was there for that. Um, as part of the resolution of that litigation, um, we agreed to surrender our grandfather's status to one of the lots. Because if you recall, you, when the tent, when the village board passed this law authorizing uh, site plan review of these two family houses, my client's building permits applications were specifically grandfathered out of that law. And there was some discussion and some issues about the building permits being issued or not. Mm -hmm. so consequently and subsequently, through a great deal of work on both sides, and I think really very, very, very terrifically detailed work, um, there was essentially two, two two tracks of resolution. The one building permit, which was already grandfathered out, was allowed to proceed with some agreements with respect to the specifications of bedrooms and density. <laughs> and, and, and we agreed to surrender our building permit on the other so that we would surrender our grandfather position and voluntarily come back to, 
to this board for site plan review, which is why we're here tonight. And I think that, um, I, I know that Mike didn't have a copy of the agreement, but this is, this. I remember this very clearly. This was very, very well negotiated and detailed agreement. So we'll get all those materials for you. But the one thing I wanted to ask about so I can be prepared the next time or perhaps just, I don't have to come, I can just deal with, with Mr. Rotenhausen by correspondence. There's a reference to compliance with easements on the property. Do you, what does that mean? Well, I, that's a question I have. Uh, you've got a mark on your uh, plan. Large area there is, a, is an easement area. And I don't know what the easement is for. So utilities and so on, but is this what we're talking that, here? Yeah. That cross hatched area, I assume, is an easement covered property. I don't know what restrictions are going to be. There's, 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 a, there's an easement there to allow for some cross access, cross utilities, and so forth. So we'll provide a copy of the easement. All right, so that, that's what you're working That's the concern. Well, there would be obvious. Just need to know you can cross it somewhere. Seems I, to the, overlap. The building's, right a, the building's not in it, within it, right? No. All right. It, okay. it, it may not even. Well, the, well, the building's not I can't there. tell. Right. No, the building's up here, right? Yeah, but it looks like the driveway comes around here and in there, so. All right, so <laughs> let me pull a file. Let me pull out easement. I will get it, get it to you with my memorandum of my understanding of what it, what it is and perfect. how it affects or doesn't affect perfect. what we're doing. Is that right? That's perfect. Okay. Thanks. 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 Yeah, the, the, the car, I put, uh, in that I had two spaces per dwelling unit, but the law was changed this year to three spaces per dwelling unit, the so parking spaces. So that's just incorrect in my memo. Well, for the last the last parking thing, there? It should say uh, so three per dwelling unit. That's six plus two more is a right. minimum. Right. And okay. you're giving us 15. So right. The question is why we need 15. Um, no, I would indicated, I think, when I added more for the purpose of <clears throat> having more. Mm -hmm. I don't, in going through this, I don't see anything on here beyond what we typically require. In fact, some of the things I think are on this plan. But I'll, just, I'll go categorically through this, respond to each one of these, and go ahead and, and highlight those for our next submission. And what's the total acreage of, dis of disturbance? The total acreage of disturbance. I assume it's less than an acre, is what you're telling us. Well, the whole parcel is not even an acre. Right. So that's, you know. And then. This is probably a quarter acre or something. The, the entire property is, is three quarters of an acre, and I would venture to say that the disturbance is probably probably a third of an acre. Anything else from you, George? Yeah. Liz, you had a question? Yes, um, you, you indicate the building restriction line on your plan, and um, uh, it was always my understanding, and perhaps I've had it wrong all this time, that uh, building restriction lines also apply to parking. So uh, your plat, as it's shown there, indicates parking within the building restriction line. Are we, are we referring to what I would call a setback line? Setback line, yeah. So. I mean, because what my job here tonight is, is to just kind of make a list of questions that I can try and get some good, you know, solid answers based on my research of the code. But the concern that, if I understand it, is that the, the setback of the building is adequate, but there are areas in the parking area that fall within the setback, and is that is that what I'm hearing? I don't think the setbacks are part of them. What, what, is that the question? Because then I can get that answer. The set, yes. All right, the parking area is within the setback shown here. And then the question is whether or not that's permissible mm -hmm. under the village's code, right? Correct. All right, so why don't we call out a question on my checklist of questions, and we'll, we'll get an answer. Mm -hmm. All right, which we'll deal with Mr. Rodenhaus, and hopefully we can agree on, we, we've agreed before. Mr. Litton, do you have any questions? No. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Zerler, any questions? So if they're going to, um, just a comment, and I don't know if that'll impact the site plan subsequently, but given that there are 15 spaces listed, which <coughs> does seem more than necessary, um, and given that the parking is <coughs> completely in front of the building, um, although I understand the easement might be an issue here, is it, at this point in time, does it make sense to just let them 
prepare a complete site plan as they have it, or should we suggest things that we want to well, might want to reduce or change at this point? I understand that we're not we don't have a full application, so right. Um, my preference would be to have them submit their application and deal with it okay. as a submitted application, so let's do that. rather than then I'll hold my comments. Chipping away, Mr. Stephens. I have a comment at this point. Okay. So um, we, your normal um, site plan submission with PDFs and the, a number of copies that building department will tell you we, we need. Uh, one, once we get that, once they say that it has all the required elements, uh, we will <coughs> schedule um, an application review meeting for the next we would like two weeks before the next meeting. That's the submission deadline. For materials. Right. <clears throat> so once that's uh, done, we will... Um, you have a date so we know what we're working against. We can probably do November 18th. November 18th. Well, it depends when they yes. submit everything. For them. Well, when is your next available meeting? What, well, like, when is, when, when is your next meeting you meet? In exactly two weeks. All right, so, so, so that was not going to work. So we can't yeah. make that. So now, <laughs> when's the next meeting after that? So if you, the next meeting is November 18th. So if you submit everything on November 4th, Tuesday, then I believe that would be sufficient. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, George, do, when I'm corresponding with you, shall I do it through the chairman directly with you? How, how do you want that done? You can do it directly to him and... With a copy to the chairman? That'd be great. And Mr. Whiteman, is that? My, my name is Maurice Whiteman, yes. Yeah. You have a new law firm, don't you? Yes. Do you have a new card? Okay. Thank you. See if I do. He never gave me a card. Uh, I'm going to make you a copy and then submit I'll it two weeks before the next meeting. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Have we established the escrow on this? Yeah, that's what it is. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. Uh, George, I know that the ZBA has referred the matter to consent. Um, if you, I'm here for this, not for that. Right. If you want me as a factual resource, I'm available. If not, I'm going to go. You know, um, <laughs> it's. I, I, I'm not here to argue anything. I guess no, I, don't think, I don't think so. Not that okay. Way. It's it's on the agenda. Um, I I can't figure out other than the statutory requirement because the code is written in a way that it says. What, what, what was the wording that looked like? They have to submit this to us, or mm -hmm. they did submit it to us. But it really is something that we don't have. Uh, I don't think we have. I, I mean, we haven't discussed it yet, but that's just my thing. If if you'd like to wait a while, we'll uh, we'll do it right now, and uh, we'll see. Is there anything else about this application now? I think we're done, right? Okay. So there is a referral from ZBA. That says, application for interpretation regarding two Mohawk. And um, any board members have any uh, anything to say about this? <clears throat> I mean, this was an Article 78 application, not a planning board or a CPA. Yeah. Um, I haven't been involved with Article 78 since the planning board member. <laughs> my understanding. Well, yeah, this. My understanding is that I'm outside of this as, as a planning board. Well, I'd say a few things about it. Yes, please. It, so I looked at George to tell us where is our position on this. The, the, this has come up in an unusual way by uh, neighbors or opponents to a project having filed a. a, a for appeal, uh, and there's a lot of questions about standing and so on about the appeal, but if I don't appeal with the zoning board, it appeals to, uh, from the building inspector's decision to issue building permits on this right. And so... No, no, not from issuance of the building permits, but the issuance of the certificate of occupancies, which were issued after the building permits were issued, the construction was in compliance right. with them. And they so didn't the challenge the building permits, they challenged the CEOs. 
So it, it, it's technically procedurally an appeal to the ZBA from the building inspector action. And uh, I think when the ZBA looked at the code, our code seems to require that all appeals, in turn appeals is in the code, uh, as well as applications, must be referred to the planning board for its review and recommendation back. And, and so that scooped in this, what is really coming up as an appeal and interpretation of the code. Normally, I don't think this board has any role whatsoever in interpretations of the code. A strictly a zoning board a jurisdictional question. We, we don't, our opinion here well, doesn't matter. We're precluded. Uh, well, it's, it's hard to say <laughs> what our ours. it's hard to say what our code means, uh, why it's referred. But I think, in the abundance of caution, it was referred here. My recommendation is that this board simply uh, either not respond or respond saying no comment. Not responding uh, assumes you've approved. So I think responding saying. We have no comment on this. It's a legal matter. It's an appropriate thing for this board to do. And it is a legal matter in the sense that it's, a, it's an unusual question, and, uh, and the ZBA will be looking at it hard and have a public hearing and deciding that issue. So I move it. Mr. Zeller, do you have any? No comments. Mr. Letton? No, that's, I, I like that. That's yeah. Move it. I would move that we take no action on this application. We recommend, have we recommend that we are taking no position on this. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See ya. Thank you. you get. Yeah. See ya. Okay. We also have a ZBA referral for a variance for an additional bedroom at 18 Mohawk Avenue. And we have, and I had it here. Somebody took it from me. Is it the six bedroom variance? Yeah, this is the one. No, I think I have it here. Oh. Thought I had it here. Okay. I have the variance. You know, I'm looking for Bren's memo. I printed it out tonight, I'm sure. You got it right here. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Okay. So this is ZBA 1415. And this is a memo from Ms. White, our director of signing. Would you like to summarize it, Brad, or should I, uh, should I read it? I can summarize it if you'd like. OK. Um, some years ago, about ten years ago, I believe, uh, this applicant um, this is that had a five bedroom house. He wanted to add a sixth bedroom, and that's not allowed. In fact, the five bedrooms are um, too many for this lot size. So it's supposed to be four. It's supposed to be four. Um, so he went to the building inspector, and at the time, the building inspector told him that if he took the doors off the two bedrooms on the second floor. I thought it was doors and partitions. No. Okay. Um, still, there's a hallway and a bathroom in the middle of the rooms. Right. So, um, Hello. it's yeah. up to you to decide if those are two rooms okay. or one. Um, he could put a room in the basement. So, he took the doors and partition off. We're not sure what that means. Okay. Um, put the room in the basement. Since then, he added the doors and partitions back in. <laughs> the building inspectors and rental registry inspection um, found that to be illegal. And so now he's coming to ask permission. Okay. Anybody have any uh, anything to say about it? No. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Zerler? Um, well, I'm surprised you have no opinion. Well, I'm ready for a motion if you want that, but. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Do you have any? Um, no, my, um, I'll be happy to wait for a motion. Okay. Mr. Litton? No. 
Ms. Harsha, anything to say no? No. Okay. You have a motion? I would recommend that we deny approval based on the density, excessive density. And it's supported by the memo from our platter? That's okay. That's supported. By the code. On the code, okay. I have a second? A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So that's that. Um, we have now, something about Green Acres I saw somewhere. We have a ZBA for Green Acres, is that true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's here somewhere too much. Green Acres. Of course, there's front yard. I'm, excuse me, Brenda, I'm reading your thing here because it's only two paragraphs. Applicants requesting front and side yard variances 15 and 7 feet respectively to place a zero net energy home closer to the lot lines. We've seen these before, I think. Mm -hmm. Looks familiar. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are all over again. Um, our one zone, it appears that the grabbing of the proposed variances would have no negative impact on the neighborhood. It should be noted we've discussed many times the R1, R2 business. In my evaluation of the entire district, there are no homes that comply with the front yard setback of 50 feet. The boards are not considering the impact of amending the R1 zone to reflect more appropriate setbacks for the village setting. So, in that light, is there anybody that would like to make a motion on this uh, recommendation to the ZBA? I would move that we support the recommendation that the front yard setback be reduced to 25 feet. And the sideline setback be adjusted to the 15 feet. Okay. Is it 15 feet? Is it 15 is requested there? Uh, well, those variances are 15 and 7. Seven, seven okay. I'm sorry. Oh, 15 just, and 7. So, so we can just say that we. That's the, that's the change. Oh. Why don't you just recommend that the, the requested variance be approved? Yes, that's Maybe what well. I recommend. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. But on that same. Oh, no. There's a little bit of X thing. <laughs> is there's been discussion about just changing the zoning up there to R2? Yes. Yeah. And that would allow two families to be built on some of the. I don't lots. think. I don't think that's what we came away with to change it to R2. No, I didn't. thought we were changing it to change the zoning. We changed the set. We requested the setbacks. Right, and the remaining in R1. Oh, R1. Remaining in R1. R1. Yeah. I'm just saying there's Isn't been right some right? discussion floating around yeah. R2 in that area. It hasn't come from village board members. It hasn't? No. Oh, okay. Where did it come from? Never mind. I don't mind. From the applicant? Okay. Never mind. Right. Okay. One, one of my so, various meetings I've attended and discussed. Okay. So I think, therefore, we are done with the agenda except for minutes. I also want to talk about training. Thanks, George. Okay. It's a pleasure, George. My <coughs> and thanks for the card. I'll give you one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In yes. Um, we could do the minutes. Does anybody have any questions about the draft planning board minutes for the meeting of October 7, 2014? Yes. We have a motion to approve the draft minutes of October 7, 2014. So Thank you. Second. Any discussion? Favor? Aye. 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 One abstention. Yeah. Big deal. <laughs> Shouldn't matter. Okay. I have two. Uh, I have two purchase orders here. One of which is something that puzzles me, which is um, a refund for an application that we never saw. Application fee. Why would the planning board have to set the vote? To give something back that we never saw was never on an agenda, I think. What was the application? Um, it was. <laughs> yes, I see hey. that. It was uh, Green Hill. Uh, it's. Um, the Green it's Acres. Alpen Clee. Green, Green Acres applied probably a couple months ago. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Thank you. For, for a planning board review for two lots. Uh, since then, they. The, the lot, the people that own the lots decided they didn't actually want to build what they wanted to build, so there was no need uh, to come before the planning board to so do the application. They However, were going to combine two lots. Oh, 
they they did pay fifty dollars, which was plugged into the planning board line with the application fee. So in order to refund them, the planning board has to make a motion to take that money back. It out was of plugged the line. into the planning board line. Okay. They have a motion to refund. So moved. Greek. Second. Second. Don't fight, boys. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We have another one here that you I will just sign. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. Okay. <laughs> Keeping it to myself. And there, there has been some discussion about training. And there was a flurry of activity. Um, because we got a memo from our planner, Ms. White, that nobody on the planning board had any training log for the year, but the year doesn't end until June. So we have time, so there's no need to rush into uh, this. I would like to encourage board members to seek training through uh, the county, which gives at least two, maybe three, times a year at uh, SUNY Ulster, um, perfectly good, free You know, I training. went to the last one. Why wouldn't that have given it? Because you didn't give the certificate to, oh. uh, you know, keep it to yourself. That's where it's going to stay, buddy. <laughs> okay, I'm so... Sure sign up for it. Yeah. Do it. Sign in. So you have a certificate, right? If, 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 you, if you don't have it, I'll get you another one, or Brad can get another one from the county. Um, so anyhow, um, I will, um, as, as I wrote in the email to you folks, it is your responsibility to get this done, but we will, um, Brandon and I will try to find some other resources besides what she sent us today, or I guess it was today. Yeah, today. Um, there's, there's lots of stuff. I went to something last night in, in Suffern or Ramapo, or one of those places, that was um, about uh, mostly about green infrastructure. It's a new um, watershed. It's, it was written by a, a manual that isn't published yet. There's a draft of the PDF, which I will send everybody the link to. Um, it was developed by the Orange County Water Authority and Hudson. I always forget. Uh, name. This is Laura Heavey's group at DAC here. Hudson River Estuary Program. Yes. <clears throat> Hudson River Estuary Program. Uh, and I think they were the only two that were party to this. But it was really very well done. And the presenter from Orange County Water Authority who said uh, it's an interesting name for his organization because they have no water and they have no authority. <laughs> but um, <laughs> anyhow... Are. But he gave a really good presentation. The gist of it is that green infrastructure costs no more than concrete, and it's so much better in the long run for everything. Um, and this gives examples of how to do it and so on. Really very fascinating. Unfortunately, we as planning board do not have any, uh, any authority, any, uh, any teeth to tell a developer you know, live roof and uh, you know, you know, daylight this creek and all that stuff. I see a hand going up in the dark over there, <laughs> Mr. Rocco, Trustee Rocco. Granted that you may not be able to give directions to a developer uh, unless there's already an issue uh, spelled out in the code, but you do have authority with the village board that can uh, make uh, changes right. in the code. So this is why I now regret seeing you, because I was about to say that. But it's fine. You said it so much better than I ever could. So, so what he said was that our power rests with our influence of the village board to do the legislating to get our code changed to require these things. And this leads to a big discussion that we really should have about doing things to keep New Paul's green or greener than, uh, than we ever have been able to do so far. But, um, you know, we don't have that much construction going on. We don't have that many projects going on, but we can still have some influence. And uh, I think anything we can do to help. Yeah, the daylight in this little yeah. 
little thing here was such a, you know, it seemed like, what? But it really is nice. It's very nice. And they, they showed a slide of the Sawmill River, which used to be a river, by the way. And it has been channelized and undergrounded and everything else through Yonkers and I forgot the other. Um, but they daylighted a large section of it through Yonkers and it's really, it's beautiful. It's, it's made such a difference to the area. Um, people, you know, that bench is there. They, it's, it's, it's great. People come and just go there because it's a des destination now. So anyhow, that's that. But, but about training, um, there's lots of stuff out there and um, I would encourage each of you to tell me what kinds of stuff you would like to have training for. We have a budget for training. I would like to use that to get something for us to have them come here rather than go to these workshops all over the place. To, to have someone design something or present something that fits our needs or our desires, what kind of stuff we would like to learn about. So I would ask each of you to please to send me a note with whatever your priorities are, whatever your thoughts are about this. How do we know whether or not a course qualifies for training? This is a real problem. It's a pain in the, in the thing for me because um, the only things that now are authorized are those that are offered by Ulster County unless we get prior village board approval. So each one has to be, and it's a real nuisance. Oh, so it's actually up to the village board whether it yes. counts. It's exactly. not a. Yes. It's not a. I, I see this hand in the audience. I have, His wife. I have a resolution to the board tomorrow night that will change that. In what way? In in all state, um, county, and planning APA. Great. So cetera, any cetera, other? Cetera. That's great because you know Dutchess County um, gives lots of training also that's really very well done mm. and cheap and it's close. And I'm sure that Orange County and, you know, neighboring areas, there's all kinds of stuff. And to have to go through the village board for, you know, for their approval is sometimes not timely possible. And sometimes it's just a nuisance. So this is, this would be really nice. Thank you, Brad. Okay. Anybody have anything else to discuss this evening? Hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? All right, everyone wants to stay here. Nobody wants to go home. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Lennon. May I have a second? Second.